Good morning. Today is October the 1st, 2024. It is about, uh, it is exactly seven minutes till nine on a Tuesday. Uh, according to reports this morning, Israel has begun the ground invasion into southern Lebanon. Uh, tanks, troops, all of that shit. Uh, uh, also, according to reports, uh, the... Uh, Yair uh, Yair 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 I can't say these names Yair Gallant, uh, the uh, uh, defense minister in Israel, uh, contacted our uh, Secretary of Defense, and uh, they had a conversation about this situation yesterday evening, late Monday evening, um, in which he uh, apparently, according to the story, uh, our fucking uh, Secretary of Defense gave them the green light to begin the ground invasion into uh, Lebanon. However, um, Lebanon says, uh, and Hezbollah says, uh, that this is not true. I'm going to switch out this television with the one in the living room today. <laughs> so if you notice a different television tomorrow, it's not, not a big deal. Um, Hezbollah says this is not true. Uh, and we see all kinds of propaganda out there that seems to, uh, they're, they're trying to promote this as a, um, as a reality. The question is why? Um, well, we, they, they do this, they do this thing in uh, the world of special operations, not special forces, but special operations. They try to demoralize the people of a nation, letting them think that they've already lost a month before uh, the United States executed or had their fucking proxy terrorists in um, uh, Libya execute Muammar Gaddafi. Uh, we ran stories that Muammar Gaddafi had fled the country uh, on his own. Oftentimes, when we do a regime change, uh, like a color revolution regime change, we'll publish that fucking story and then try to block that individual, uh, the leader of that country, whether it's uh, whatever country, Venezuela comes to mind. Um, but uh, they, we've done it in many others. We'll try to get that story out there and get our assets in their news and their independent, privately owned news organizations within the country to publish that stuff. So right now, what they're trying to do is make the people of Lebanon feel like they've already lost, the end is nigh, uh, there's no hope. And to that end, the New York Times also published a story claiming that uh, the government of Lebanon is nowhere to be seen, which is another form of propaganda that we do. Uh, we did that in eastern Syria when we wanted to regime change that part of Syria and hand it over to the glorious Kurds for their part of uh, part of the uh, Greater Kurdistan project. I'll be sharing some inf some images of that with you in a second. Uh, we claim that there's no fucking government here. There's no government in Syria anymore back at one particular time. We said that Assad had fled at one particular time. This is all propaganda. Um, there's a guy by the name of Ori, uh, what's his fucking name? Uh, what's his name likes him? Um, Kyle um, Kalinsky likes him, I think. Uh, someone did an interview with him. Um, might have been Owen Jones. I don't, it might have been Owen Jones. He just kept rambling on. Might have been Owen Jones. Did a chat with him. He's in Tel Aviv, and for some reason, uh, he's, not, he's one of the few, uh, quote-unquote, opposition fucking reporters uh, who is not fucking rounded up by the Israeli uh, Gestapo. Um, he's claiming uh, that this difference of opinion between Hezbollah saying they're not, they, haven't, they haven't invaded fucking Lebanon and Israel saying, oh, we've taken this area and taken that area and we're rolling through Lebanon, rolling through the streets in Lebanon. His take is that um, they're both telling the truth. Which, of course, is, I, I guess, his way of keeping from having the Israeli Gestapo come take him away. Um, he claims that maybe that's because uh, uh, 
the Israelis are talking about a <coughs> uh, expeditionary force, small ground force that's running around taking pictures inside Lebanon as if you don't have fucking cameras that can take them. Tell what time it is at 36,000 feet in a drone. Somehow we need expeditionary forces now uh, to run around inside of Israel. I mean, inside of Lebanon. Israeli forces to run around inside Lebanon and take pictures of shit. I, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Um, to me, that's ridiculous. Uh, if you're sending an expeditionary force inside Lebanon, and Lebanon knows you've, got, you've been building up on the border, they've been building up on the border, and according to this Oren guy or Ori guy, uh, that's, that's probably what's happened. That would be just idiotic. You might as well just fucking shoot those guys yourselves. Save yourself some time. Uh, because, uh, of course, the border is going to be defended, and, and it, it, it's ridiculous to think that you could send a small troop into fucking Lebanon to run around and expect them to get back out. <coughs> Let's talk about some of this shit, shall we? Uh, Hezbollah denies Israeli troops crossed into Lebanon. We'll get to that in one second. All the stories. Uh, Turkey slams Israel's Lebanon invasion. Turkey condemned Israel's ground offensive in Lebanon on Tuesday, calling it a violation of sovereignty and territorial integrity and labeling it as an unlawful act of occupation. Uh, very, very true. Uh, Israel invades Lebanon from RT. The IDF announced the beginning of limited, localized, and targeted ground raids, which I guess is what this Ori guy comes up with how he got his, his, his thing, uh, against the militant group Hezbollah in Lebanon on Tuesday. The move comes after two weeks of bombing by the Jewish state that killed over 1,000 people and displaced one million more. During the bombing campaign, the IDF killed several senior Hezbollah members, including the group's longtime leader, Hassan Nasrallah, uh, a rumored Israeli uh, operation to simultaneously explode communications devices belonging to members of the Milton Group also reportedly killed children as well as its intended targets. Um, and of course, NATO member has called for uh, use of force against Israel to stop the invasion. Of course, that one NATO member would be Turkey. They're calling for uh, NATO to use. They've also, uh, Erdogan also called on, upon the uh, UN, Secure, uh, UN General Assembly to use its power and force uh, to stop the illegal fucking, uh, the illegal occupation of Gaza and the West Bank, uh, and the bombing and the genocide in Gaza. Oh, I, I posted these two so you can see the difference. Um, Hezbollah targeted Mossad HQ, uh, Galat military base near Tel Aviv, uh, in uh, largest attack. Uh, they fired rockets, a salvo of rockets, at a, I guess it's called Galat military base and Mossad headquarters outside of Tel Aviv. Um, uh, and of course, the Israelis retaliate by attacking a UN a UN run school in Gaza, killing seven people. A UN-run school in Gaza that was housing displaced people. This is just, this is, Hezbollah targets fucking military targets. Israel targets civilians. That's just, that's glorious Israel for you. Um, there's a bunch of stuff. Go to my website. You can see these links. You can get to these links and get to these articles here. Uh, I want to talk about this. Hezbollah denies Israeli troops crossed into Lebanon. This is from Al Jazeera. Hezbollah has denied that Israeli forces crossed into southern Lebanon after Israel said its forces were carrying out limited raids there. Quote, all Zionist claims that Israeli occupation forces have entered Lebanon are false. Hezbollah media officials, uh, relations officials, uh, Mohammed Afif, told Al Jazeera. He added that there had not yet been any direct ground clashes between Hezbollah resistance fighters and Israeli occupation forces. Our fighters are ready to confront enemy forces that dare to attempt to enter Lebanon. You can go read more of that. The link is there at Al Jazeera. Um, and this is, this is what I mean by um, this makes sense. Uh, that it, it makes sense that or, his name is Ori Goldberg. You can go read his opinion there. He reports it. He thinks both sides are telling the truth about this. 
Uh, if that's the case, then Ori of all people should know it would be the first time Israel told the truth about anything they do during wartime. Uh, by deception, war is made. That is the motto of the Mossad. Um, Fox News has launched some Hasbara propaganda demonizing Hezbollah and Lebanon, claiming that they, they're raping the Syrians now and, and, they're, and they're pimping out the Syrian women folk. Of course, uh, what they use in this bullshit fucking propaganda. But again, this is just demonizing the uh, demonizing the government in Lebanon. This is this is a, this is just straight demonizing the government in Lebanon. New York Times takes a different approach. They try the old trope of there is no government in Lebanon. They're gone. As crisis builds, Lebanon's government is nowhere to be found. They're gone. I've told you they've done this multiple times before in various different fucking regime change operations. And of course, the New York Times uh, claims Israel has invaded Lebanon, but then only shows images of tanks near the border with Lebanon. Oh my God, they've, they've invaded, they've crossed the border. Here's another picture of them near the border with Lebanon. There is no fucking images. There are no images here. They claim that they have invaded based on what the IDF tells them. And I guess I'm the only fucking reporter on the planet who still remembers that, oh yeah, the IDF lies constantly about everything. Uh it would make perfect sense for them to run this fucking uh, campaign to try to demoralize the people of Lebanon, to try to get them to have less faith in their government. <laughs> Benjamin Netanyahu had a state, made a statement yesterday um, talking to the people of Lebanon and the people, the good people of, of Iran. And basically what he said was, uh, we, we, the glorious Israelis, the, the, with the most moral army in the world, uh, we have no problem with you. Uh, our problem is with the evil government that, that runs you, the evil government that runs fucking Gaza, the evil government that runs fucking Lebanon, the evil government that runs fucking Iran. Because, of course, these governments don't kowtow to glorious Israel like the United States does. Now, Interestingly enough, if you recall, I certainly do, uh, we said this, George Bush said the same thing on the eve of our illegal invasion based on lies to the people of Iraq. We got no problem with you. We just want to get rid of your government and privatize your central bank system and then privatize, of course, all the oil coming out of the ground and then neoliberalize the country and put a puppet regime in place of your fucking uh, government. We got no problem with you. We'd like you to stick around um, so that American businesses coming over there can take advantage of your fucking cheaper labor. We got no problems with you, says Bibi Netanyahu. The whole point is to get people to believe <laughs> that their government has already, their country has already fallen before it's even started. It's a demoralization tactic. It's the work of special operations. Uh, and it's worked to some degree. Well, uh, of course, there's going to be news reports inside of fucking Lebanon saying, oh, we don't know what the fuck's going on, but People in Lebanon can fucking Google. They do have the internet and they will read Fox News. They will read New York Times. They will see, you know, CBS and ABC and, and MSNBC and BBC all reporting the same thing. Oh my God, there's an invasion. When there's none. One might make the fucking reference to the film Wag the Dog, if one so chose. This is not to say that Israel hasn't been bombing uh, and attacking the people of, of Lebanon for quite some time. Of course, Israel will tell you, we've got no problem with you, people of Lebanon, but they've been bombing and attacking them since October the 8th. I mean, let's just be fair. Let's be honest. And the equivalency, the, the comparison between the number of fucking rockets fired by Lebanon into Israel 
as opposed to the number fired by Israel into Lebanon, uh, you'd have rockets fired by over the course of the entire fucking almost nearly a year now. Uh, Lebanon into Israel is this, and then of course Israel into Lebanon is well from well is is this. Is this why? Because U.S. taxpayers pay for it. And they just keep getting more and more and more and more. Why? Well, war pays. And, of course, there is, of course, this. What you see on the right is a patch on an Israeli soldier's uniform. What you see on the left is the greater Israel plan. As you can see, uh, a big chunk of Egypt, Syria, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia have to be given up <coughs> for the greater Israel plan. And of course, in order to do that, this will take decades of conflict. And since you can't get rid of a prime minister during wartime, that will keep Benjamin Netanyahu out of prison for at least 10 years, maybe even more. But then you have to consider the nation states that are erased because of the greater Israel plan. By the way, right there on a the patch on one of these fucking soldiers' arms would be Jordan and Lebanon. And of course, Palestine. They all have to be erased, which, by the way, the New York Times seems to be helping with when they say, oh, the government is nowhere to be seen. Erased. Now, interestingly enough, uh, a lot of fans of Israel uh, in Iraqi Kurdistan, the Barzani family, Barzani, is that his name? The Barzani clan, Barzani Kurdistan, Saudi Arabia, Barzani Kurdistan, um, the Greater Kurdistan Project. A lot of fans in Kurdistan of Israel. Israel's big supporter of Kurdistan and the Greater Kurdistan Project. Interestingly enough, if you map Greater Israel right up next to Greater Kurdistan, they fit like a glove. Of course, what the Kurds don't realize is eventually the Zionists will want their piece of the puzzle too, their piece of the prize too, because the Greater Kurdistan Project encompasses the oil-producing regions of Iran and Iraq, the, be the best oil-producing regions of Iran and Iraq, and of course, uh, Syria and Turkey. And if they expand it, like I think they would, uh, they would have access to not only the Black Sea, but also the Mediterranean Sea, the Caspian Sea, the Persian Gulf. That would make Kurdistan the most important hub in the energy sectors of the world. Can Israel let fucking Kurdistan own that when Israel could easily fucking absorb them as well? I don't know. You tell me. But that is why this is, these are the birth pangs of the new Middle East. And not coincidentally, this was a phrase coined by Condi Rice in 2006. The last time Israel invaded Lebanon. These are modern day versions of the birth pangs of a new Middle East. Are they legitimately invading Lebanon? At this point, I don't think so. At this point, I think they're, they have already, I don't know if the most recent uh, 
aircraft carrier group that left Norfolk, Virginia three days ago has arrived. I don't know if they can get there that quickly. I know we already have, I think, something like 40,000 troops in the area. Um, however, uh, Israel knows that this will kick off if they look to invade and occupy and take the whole of Lebanon. Uh, this will not be allowed by the Iranians. It will not be allowed by the Iraqis. It will not be allowed by the Syrians. It will not be allowed by anybody in that region. And the Jordanians. Why? Well, you, you tell me why. It won't be allowed by the Saudis. Or the Egyptians, for that matter. Because they know. Just like, listen, Erdogan, people say, oh, the Sultan of Turkey, Erdogan. All these people who supposedly stand for the liberation of fucking, the, 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 who, who oppose, supposedly, they oppose the invasion of Iraq and, and Syria and all these places. They all like, oh, yeah, but, but Syria is governed by, a, by an evil dictator, which means they tacitly support regime change. And of course, they say the same thing about Recep Erdogan, Turkey. Because, but, but Erdogan, comes, he's, he's one of the few that comes out and, and, and openly talks about the genocide being committed by Israel against the people of fucking Palestine. Even in Saudi Arabia, even in, in the Middle East. We are just now starting to hear rumblings from Jordan, although the Queen had said something about this months ago, and I talked about that. But Bashar al-Assad is not saying much. The Iraqis aren't saying much. And certainly not our puppet regime in Iraq isn't saying much. The Iranians are talking about it. And of course, the Turks are talking about it. <coughs> Why is Turkey so opposed to the Kurds and to our plans? Because half of Turkey is on the chopping block to be sliced up and diced up and given to Kurdistan, the Greater Kurdistan Project. And they oppose it vehemently. And they talk about it a lot. Um, so what we have here is a situation where a number of states, if they were to openly invade Lebanon um, and with who knows? In 2006, when Condi Rice was talking about the birth pangs of a new Middle East, Israel was getting their asses kicked by the Lebanese. Um, and they failed. Israel failed. Uh, the birth pangs had to wait another 2006, 20, 18 years, right? And here we are. Here we are. This has escalated to this fucking point. This whole thing in Gaza has escalated to this point simply because the Zionists refuse to recognize Palestinian state. Because they covet the land. And so the whole thing is kicking off. And this, this is the ultimate fucking prize. These are the new birth pangs of the new Middle East. Now, as I said before, to actually invade is, to claim you're invading is one thing, to actually invade is another. Here, just so you can, so I'm not, so you can just look at the side by sides here, see how that works. 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 Okay, to actually invade is another. <coughs> yes, the U.S. is there. Yes, the U.S. has troops on the ground. And while we're here, we're going to go ahead and talk about something else. I'm having a discussion. And yes, the U.S. is there. Yes, the U.S. has troops on the ground. Uh, but that's it. There's, there's nobody else. And I... I, I adamantly believe that were this to come down to uh, a, a, a shooting contest between the United States and Israel and 
everybody else in the Middle East. Uh, I tend to believe that larger nation states are going to get involved. <coughs> and not on our side. And you can read into that what you want. So I think there's a, I think there's a, there's a strong possibility that Lloyd Austin, uh, Secretary of Defense of the United States, when talking to Yair, uh, uh, Gallant, Gallant, Yair Gallant, is that his name? Uh, uh, the Minister of Defense for Israel. I think in their conversation last night, the deal was let's just try a fucking you know, let's let's try a, a, a trial balloon. Let's float a trial balloon and see how that looks uh, and get everyone to say that you're doing it and see what, what happens there. Um, let's do a kind of a head fake and see what happens there um, and see what kind of reaction we get from uh, Russia and China and Iran um, and see what that, see how that goes. At the same time, demoralize the people in fucking Lebanon and make them think that their government has failed and they're see if we can cause some chaos uh, for the government in Lebanon at the same time. Um, I, I don't think that they are willing to pull the trigger as of the moment. Uh, again, I don't know what that other aircraft carrier group is doing and where it is, uh, but we'll see. Hezbollah as far as I know, is still saying the ground invasion has not begun. And there's no photographs and no video that I've seen supporting it. Now, I'm sure some assholes have put, you know, a tank driving through the woods and said, oh, my God, this is Lebanon and this is an Israeli tank when it's clearly a German tank from 1942 or some shit. Um, I'm sure that's happening out there. Be careful, you know. Um, but the propaganda line is, is deep right now. The propaganda line against Lebanon is deep. Uh, and everything is in support of the genocidal fucking maniacs in, in Israel, uh, which they've killed 16,000 children. They've literally killed 16,000 children. And they are in the process of withholding fucking aid and starving other kids. And in case you don't know, this severe long-term malnutrition has lasting effects on a human fucking body at, at the, at the, at, 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 during childhood. Has lasting effects on a human body. Lasting effects on their fucking development, intellectual development, the brain development, the physical development. Um, it, it, it's just atrocious. It's atrocious. What Israel is doing is keeping these people in the world's largest ghetto or concentration camp. And it's just unbelievable. Uh, somebody was asking me, and we talked about uh, Resolution 242. Uh, when I say that, uh, we need to go back to, when I say when uh, Lavrov says, when uh, uh, Norman Finkelstein says, we need to go back to the uh, June 1967 accord uh, in terms of the boundaries for Israel and, and, and Gaza, um, somebody's come to me and said, well, it's not really June, it's November, and it's Resolution 242. Uh, there's interesting information here if you're interested on what Resolution 242 did and what it more importantly did not do. Resolution 242 has been recalled not once but twice in subsequent uh, UN resolutions. However, it is still the basis for supposedly the definition. Some you, Madeleine Albright would tell you, it's the basis uh, for the uh, definition of the difference between Palestine and Israel. Um, that is not true. Uh, all fucking. <laughs> parties involved who are Palestinian uh, rejected Resolution 242 uh, the day after. This one, uh, this one here denounced it the day after. Nabil Shaith, Shath, Nabil Shath, the for foreign minister of the Palestinian Authority in November of 1967. Uh, said, whether a state is announced now or after liberation, its borders must be those of June 4, 1967. We will not accept a state without borders or with borders based on UN Resolution 242, 
which we believe no, is no longer suitable. On the contrary, Resolution 242 has come to be used by Israel as a way to procrastinate. Um, I don't know when she, was, when she said that, or when he said that. I don't know. Uh, the idea behind 242 was simple. After the Six-Day War, during which, by the way, uh, it was the Six-Day War, it was in June of 1967, when Israel attacked the USS Liberty with uh, three planes painted black. Um, they attacked, uh, it was basically an intelligence and surveillance vessel that for some reason had been sent out by itself with no fucking uh, protection during the Six-Day War to observe what was happening off the coast of fucking Egypt. Israel then, knowing where they were somehow, sent three planes there and two fucking torpedo speedboats. Um, the three planes attacked the uh, surface of the plane, dropping a few of the, of the ship, of the, of the Liberty, um, even though there was an American flag flying, and uh, then the torpedo boat. Uh, launched a fucking torpedo, one of the torpedo boats launched a torpedo which blew a hole in the side of the USS Liberty and killed 36 or 37 U.S. sailors. They did this because they were trying to bait the United States into the conflict. And there are reports that then Secretary of State, of Secretary of Defense had issued the order to launch a plane, a B-52, carrying a nuclear weapon. They wanted to, they were going to drop it on, Israel, on Egypt. However, uh, all of their plans were put asunder uh, because it just happened to be a Russian submarine which surfaced and let them know they were watching the whole thing. At that point, they had to turn the fucking uh, B-52 back. People will argue about what facilitated, what preempted uh, the Six-Day War, um, but there's no argument. Israel wanted land. They wanted to steal land. They wanted to secure the Sinai Peninsula. They wanted to devastate um, Syria. They wanted to devastate Jordan. They wanted to devastate fucking Egypt. Um, and steal the land once and for all that these countries were uh, controlling at the time, parts, parts of Palestine. Um, that was it. That was it. Um, the reason that people uh, say, um, we're going to go back to the uh, accords, if that's the right word, it probably isn't, but of June 1967, is because they're talking about they want to go back to June 4th, 1967. These are the recognized international borders between Israel and Palestine. The problem with Resolution 242, though Resolution 242 does stipulate that according to UN Charter 2, after World War II, um, it's international standing international fucking law that no nation is allowed to profit off of an act of aggression by seizing the land. That was no longer allowed because Germany was doing that during fucking World War II and it was so offensive. And so, so the United Nations and, um, uh, got together and said, this is no longer, this is Article 2 in their charter. Um, and so, of course, uh, UN, uh, UN Resolution 242 cites that by saying, Israel must leave occupied territories uh, in basically what was a land for peace arrangement. However, the problem and the reason why 242 exists and has existed since November of 1967, and yet West Bank is still occupied, and for the most part, and Gaza was occupied until 19, in 2005, until 2005, <laughs> but they're still occupied. They're, they're just sealed off from the fucking world, so they're still occupied. So, in spite of the fact that Resolution 245 was um, accepted 
242 was accepted in 1967, November of 1967, uh, we still had the same fucking problem. And there's a reason for that, because it was designed that way. There's an interesting thing in the, one of the articles I, was, I, I cite down below that, that stipulates, uh, the problem is it says, first of all, it doesn't say which happens first. It's, it's a land for peace deal. The, the Palestinians reject it because nowhere in the entire fucking wording of Resolution 242 is the word Palestine mentioned. And people think that that means that because the whole thing is about Jordan and it's about Egypt and Egypt is going to give up this because Egypt already has the West, uh, uh, Gaza and Jordan has the West Bank then the West Bank was Jordan and Gaza was Egypt. It's not true. And that's one of the reasons the Palestinians are pissed off about it. But you have to remember, though the Russians were approached after the uh, Six-Day War by both the Egyptians and the Syrians, and, asked, and of course Syria as well, with uh, this Golan Heights, though they were approached by these entities, these countries, uh, to push for a UN Security Council resolution uh, stipulating Israel has to get the fuck out of the occupied territories. Uh, they did so, but the British are the ones who actually wrote it. And of course, they debated it from June of 19, late June, mid to late June 1967, all the way to November. And as they debated, they took out specific language. Okay? One of the things they took out was uh, the language, Israel must withdraw from all occupied territories. They took out the word all. So it reads, Israel must withdraw from occupied territories. What's the difference? Well, if you have a pie... You have either, and you say all the pie, so-and-so gets all the pie, then so-and-so gets all the pie. But if you say someone gets pie, that could mean a sliver, or that could mean a half, because they've gotten pie. <laughs> they took the word all out, which is another reason Palestinians fucking rejected this wholeheartedly. If you take the word all out, then Israel could say, okay, you recognize us, and our right to exist and start doing business with us, and we'll withdraw from territories and uh, from occupied territories. A sliver of fucking the West Bank and a sliver of Golan Heights and a sliver of fucking Gaza. It, it, the, the wording is deeply problematic, aside from the fact that it doesn't ever mention Palestine. Let me show you a little history of this. Have I pulled this up? How many do I have? I have two of the same. Where's the other one? Palestine theory. Okay. Let's go to Palest this one. Let's go to this one. Okay, so right now, uh, this, is, this is Israel, and this is Palestine. This is literally what they've done to Palestine. But as you can see, the line, the green line, still exists. These are occupied territories in the West Bank. And there's some occupied territories in Gaza. Okay. This is the partition plan of 1947 and the Jewish land, and, 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 and as, as it existed in 1947, this is the partition plan of 1947, and this is 1949. A lot happened between 1949 and 1947. But as you can see, this is where they want to go back to. This is June 4th, 1967. So when someone says, like... Sergey Lavrov, like Norman Finkelstein, like Scott Creighton. Uh, when someone says they want to go back to the uh, June 1967 plan, uh, or, or I call it the accord, 
Um, this is what they're talking about. This right here is the currently recognized state of Palestine and Israel as it stands. And there are a series of maps that show uh, how that progressed. Here is, this was 1946, 1949. This is the 1949 plan. Okay, let's go to the, this is the, this is the bigger plan, right? This is 1946. If you look down here, this is a survey of Palestine, April 1946. To say that Palestine never existed is fucking ludicrous. Um, this is 1946. When people say they want to go back to 1948, what they're talking about basically is, now this is where we are here. That would be the survey plan. See this? The difference here between these? Obviously, you have the acre area up here. You have this what Sinai looking thing down here. So you have that is, is missing. And of course, this is smaller and it's not connected. Uh, you'll notice in this plan, the original partition plan, uh, this area in the north called the acre plan, acre area, of course, West Bank and Gaza, uh, they were all connected. You could make, you could travel and stay in Palestine. Uh, according to the 1967 plan, that isn't the case anymore. And this, of course, is the plan from 1949. This is what we have today, or what should be existing today, or was recognized uh, as Palestine today. Okay? Um, that's the difference. And that is what Israel is trying like hell to do away with. I remember Bibi Netanyahu back in 2000 telling uh, a, a crowd of people that there's no way he's ever going to go back to the 1967 plan, the June 67 plan. Never. Yeah, they will argue all day long that they can, you know, talk and, and debate Resolution 242. Why? Because this is what 242 leads to. The other major problem with 242 is this. And again, you don't have to take my word for it. You can go re pull up on this, 242, and read these. And there's a quote, there's a long quote here. Uh, and this is from Frontline, but there's stuff from all kinds of folks. Um, it talks about the problems with Resolution 242. But one of the bigger problems with Resolution 242 is not only do they not mention Palestine, not only do they that they deliberately write the fucking language so that, you know, they could not give away, give back all the occupied territories, but occupied territories. They give back one little sliver of occupied territories, and there you go, that's your sliver of the pie, and we've lived up to 242. <laughs> but also, the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems is, there's no fucking definition in terms of what happens first. It's a land for peace deal. Okay, well, who gives up, who, who, do you give back the land before you get the peace? Or do you get the peace before you, and, and before you get the land? Israel and the United States and their fucking collaborators say, you got to give us the peace and, make, uh, and recognize us and our fucking sovereignty and Israel's sovereignty while we're still occupying illegally Palestinian land. You got to do that for us before we give up Territories. Not all the territories, but some territories. And of course, the Palestinians and the Saudis and the Jordanians and the Turks and the fucking Syrians and, you know, Iranians say that's no, 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 no. <laughs> you give up the fucking land, all the land that you're illegally occupying, and go back to the June 1967 map. <laughs> before we fucking recognize you as a state, before we recognize your legitimacy. And that's why Saudi Arabia, that's where Saudi Arabia is right now. Saudi Arabia is, is, is they say, we will recognize, we will help, we will recognize fucking Israel, we will do business with Israel. Is, Bibi Netanyahu, during a fucking thing at the, UN Secure, at the UN General Assembly, this past week, held up two fucking maps. And said, oh, this is the evil fucking map showing fucking blacked out Iran and, and all these, oh, evil people. 
And here's a happy map, and it was all white, and it had a nice green fucking swath through it. I said, the green swath was business and trade going through fucking Jordan and through fucking Saudi Arabia and into the fucking, oh, everything's going to be wonderful and peachy, and we're all going to be working together. <laughs> you can have one or the other, you know, and, and, and Iran means this, and, and we mean this, and Iran is bad, and we mean blah, 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 blah. He's literally doing, he's a fucking imbecile, first of all. He's an imbecile, first of all. But second, he's, 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 he, Hasbara has two different meanings. In Israel, it means uh, to persuade, in, or our history. In, but, but what they mean by Hasbara outside of Israel is propaganda for the idiots. He talks to people at the fucking United Nations like they're all idiots. You know? I think his little stupid fucking bomb thing. His, 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 his Wiley Coyote bomb fucking last time he was talking to the people at fucking UN General Assembly. Um, Saudi Arabia is not going to do shit with them. Saudi Arabia is not going to do anything with them. That's, that, that whole fucking, fucking visual aid of his was total bullshit. Saudi Arabia will not do a goddamn thing with them. They won't recognize them. Unless, of course, they give up all the occupied territories. Which, of course, the only reason they won't do that now is because the Zionists that have been planning this for eons want that fucking land. And the, the first fucking, the foundation of the Greater Israel Project is Israel. And if they can't even steal all of Palestine for Israel from the Palestinians who have nothing, then how the fuck are they going to steal land from Saudi Arabia? How are they going to steal land from Turkey? How are they going to steal all of fucking uh, Lebanon? Another six-day war? Another false flag attack on American fucking ships? They'd have to. They'd absolutely have to. <laughs> That's where we are right now with this situation. I don't know. <laughs> Resolution 242 is still uh, considered by some to be uh, uh, to be uh, a path forward towards the recognition of Palestine as a state, but it is not what defines Palestine as a state. In fact, it does the exact opposite. It was written by the British, if that tells you anything. And if you want to go back to the foundation of Israel, uh, it was written by the British, and they negotiated it uh, in the Security Council for several months, between June and November, and they made it acceptable to the Israelis. Why? <laughs> because uh, it didn't go anywhere. It didn't do anything. And because they erased the word Palestine from the resolution. It was immediately rejected by the Palestinians, by the PLO, by Yasser Arafat, by Nasser uh, from Egypt. It was immediately fucking uh, uh, opposed. Now, later, Jordan uh, acquiesced. And they accepted the terms of it. Of course, Israel never left the West Bank. Um, and they recognized, Jordan recognized Israel's occupation of the fucking West Bank. Uh, Egypt took longer for them to uh, do something about it. However, um, eventually Israel did occupy, remained occupied in fucking Gaza, uh, as an occupation force and with settlements until 2005 when they were finally forced out, not by the Egyptians, but by the Bush administration. Um, so I can understand people's confusion with Resolution 242 from November of 2000 and, uh, 242, uh, 1967. <laughs> But again, remember, Resolution 242 came from, was born from, uh, the end of the Six-Day War. Uh, it is the uh, beginning, 
uh, of the Six Day War. It's the June 4th uh, version of uh, the international map, recognized map, uh, up until that moment. It is the recognition of that, it is the understanding of that, that when people say, uh, we go back to the June 1967 accord or resolution or whatever you want to say, in terms of the uh, start of the Six Day War. That is the map of them, and that is what defines Palestine as Palestine. Um, and that is what is, and that is what, that is the map that is legally uh, understood to be Palestine by the vast majority of the fucking world. By the vast majority of the world. Anyway, I'll keep you up to date as much as I can today on what's happening with Israel. Maybe at this point, as I'm making this video, maybe Israel has invaded. I don't know. Um, but I, I have a hard time believing this Ori guy's plan that they would send fucking, you know, a, a platoon of troops into the teeth of Hezbollah, uh, across the border just to get them fucking slaughtered, captured, um, and then slaughtered. I, I don't think that's, that, that happened. And as of the moment, and I just did my research just to, before starting the video, as of the moment, uh, there are no images and videos of Israel invading Lebanon. However, uh, these are the birth pangs, the new birth pangs uh, of the new Middle East. If these are the new birth pangs of the new Middle East, uh, it won't be long. I thank you for your time.